Welcome to AutoFlight Logic's series of videos on how to take advantage of autopilot. Today's focus will be on cruise mode. If you haven't already, I recommend watching the overview and the focus videos in particular to learn how to get started as well as to enable and disable autopilot. If you haven't already, also check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash autopilot users group. Cruise allows you to fly the aircraft with the remote control while Autopilot uses one or more strategies to automatically control the throttle, the pitch the roll, the yaw, and even the camera and gimbal controls. It also allows you to provide inspire-like gimbal control by yawing the aircraft as needed to remain focused, and there will be more on this later. Finally, for those familiar with DJI's home and course lock, Cruise provides these features enhanced again by intelligent focus on an object, even a moving one. Bottom line, Cruise is a powerful mode that sometimes requires a little thought to understand what it's trying to do. But to help you understand this, I'm going to give you a few examples to make it clearer, as well as demonstrate how to use Cruise. To start, think of your car in the cruise control feature. If you're driving and you want to maintain 30 miles an hour, you can press the cruise control button and the car will cruise at 30 miles an hour. You can also press the decelerate or accelerate button on the car's stick to control the accelerator pedal. As the quadcopter's pitch control maintains the speed of the aircraft, cruise can simulate pushing the joystick forward a certain amount to maintain a specific speed. An autocraft's cruise can do more than just automate the speed of the aircraft. It can automate the actions of all the sticks, how the aircraft yaws, how it turns, how it rises, etc. Think of cruise in autopilot as your car's cruise control on steroids. It can do all of this while you maintain control over the other sticks in conjunction of what you're automating. Before I show the UI, here is one of the coolest things that Cruise provides. If you watch the video I had done on Focus, I demonstrated how powerful the Inspire's 360 degree gimbal was with the Focus mode to main focus as I moved up and down as well as from left to right. While the Phantom 3's gimbal control twisted the pitch of the gimbal, it cannot yaw so Focus cannot twist the gimbal to maintain focus as I go left to right. Now, using cruise mode, you can set the yaw strategy to focus, which will actually yaw the entire aircraft as needed. And I'll show more examples and how you do this soon. This is really powerful. In Cruise's user interface, there are four key things to think about controlling, either manually by the joystick or automated via autopilot. The first is the vertical strategy, which controls the altitude of the aircraft. The second is the pitch roll strategy, which controls the direction of the aircraft and the speed that it is moving. Third, the yaw strategy, which controls the direction the aircraft is facing. With the Inspire 1, the gimbal can automatically rotate to maintain focus on the object. However, for the Phantom 3, this is what you need to ensure to maintain the aircraft is pointed at the object you are trying to focus on. And fourth, the focus strategy, which controls the gimbal as well as the yaw of the aircraft when the yaw strategy is also set to focus. As you saw, each strategy has a variety of sub-options. The key thing to remember is that if a strategy is set to joystick, that means that you are manually controlling it with the sticks. When you push it to one of the other buttons, you begin the hand control of that particular stick over to autopilot. Let's put Cruise to work. I'm going to start with the example I mentioned up front, where I described getting Inspire-like focus behavior for the Phantom 3, which does not have a 360 degree gimbal. The goal here is to allow me to fly the aircraft using the remote control joysticks, the right stick, the altitude, as well as the altitude, but allow autopilot to control the yaw of the aircraft as well as the gimbal pitch. I'm going to set the vertical strategy to joystick, the pitch roll strategy to joystick, and then I'm going to set the yaw strategy to focus and the focus strategy to operator. I'm going to engage the flight dashboard. I'm going to start the engage sequence, count down, and the aircraft will take off and then turn around and face back toward me and fix the gimbal so I am perfectly focused in frame. Now, as I freely fly, Autopilot not only tilts the gimbal as I move up and down, but it properly rotates or yaws the aircraft to point the camera at me when I move left or right. 
If you are flying the Inspire and the focus strategy is set to subject, the yaw strategy will determine whether the entire aircraft or just the gimbal will rotate. If you select the focus yaw strategy, the entire aircraft will rotate. If you select the joystick heading or percent yaw strategy, then just the gimbal will rotate. By the way, you can look at the triangle in the lower right hand corner to see that the aircraft is focused on me the entire time. Let's discuss the pitch roll joystick orientation. These four buttons are all about determining which direction the aircraft will go when you push forward, back, left and right on the right joystick. When you fly the aircraft normally and you push the right joystick forward, the aircraft goes forward in relation to the front of the craft. When you push to the left, the aircraft flies to the left. What these options allow you to do is to change the direction that is considered forward, often without requiring you to, air, to yaw the aircraft or the gimbal. To be clear, this is not changing the orientation of the aircraft, but the direction that the aircraft will go in based upon which sticks you press. This can be confusing, and you should think about it before you change it, or you might find yourself pushing the sticks in one direction and wondering why it's going in a different direction. The first option is aircraft, which is most like what you're used to. When aircraft is selected, you need to picture yourself sitting in the cockpit of the quadcopter. So, if the quad is facing you and focused on you, pushing right makes the quadcopter move to the right, which is actually moving to your left. Realize that if the aircraft is selected and you are focused on something else, pushing right will still make the quadcopter move to the right based upon the direction of the aircraft. If the object that you're focusing on is in front of you, pushing right will make the aircraft go to the right, which is different from when it's facing you. Now let's discuss device. The device option actually refers to the orientation of the tablet or the phone, not the quadcopter. Think of the top of the tablet or the phone as forward. Think of it this way. In this case, the aircraft is pointed down this field. The tablet that I'm using is also pointed down this field. When that is true, it will act the same way as aircraft does. Pushing forward makes it go forward, back, back, left, left, right, right. However, watch what happens if I move the tablet from facing down the field to the right. Now, if I push the joystick forward, the quadcopter actually moves to the right. This option simply allows you a simple and easy way to change orientation on the fly. For those of you that are familiar with DJI's IOC modes, the bearing option is basically the same thing as home lock. Pushing forward on the joystick pushes the craft away from you, pulling brings the aircraft toward you. The big difference between this and DJI's home lock is that you can set the aircraft to focus on a separate object or point of interest. So if you look at this example, I've got the aircraft focused on home plate. However, I'm standing off in right field. As I push the aircraft away from me, the aircraft goes away from me, and when I pull it, it comes back toward me. However, the entire time, the aircraft yaws as necessary to maintain focus on home plate. As with DJI's home lock, the bearing option is a great way to bring your quadcopter back if you're not exactly sure where it is or what orientation it is facing. Absolute orientation is most like DJI's course lock. You are manually changing the direction of where forward, back, left, and right is. However, you're changing it based upon a compass angle. As with bearing orientation, absolute orientation also differentiates itself from DJI because it can maintain focus on an item even if the quadcopter is going in a different direction. Let's use a live example here. In this case, due north is right toward home plate. Uh, due south is toward center field. I'm going to select absolute orientation and then I'm going to set the direction to be 180 degrees. So now anytime that I press forward on the right stick, it's going to go due south. If I pull back, it's going to go due north. And this is regardless of the overall yaw or orientation of the aircraft. As with the other example, I've got the focus strategy set toward home plate, so as I fly around, the aircraft automatically yaws the aircraft to point the camera at home plate regardless of where I fly. I'm going to go back and take you through the various options that are available under the vertical pitch roll and yaw strategy. 
Let's start with a vertical strategy. First, there is an altitude option, which allows you to set the height or the altitude uh, of the aircraft once you engage it. This allows you to manually decide what altitude to put the aircraft at. The percent option is the equivalent of how hard or soft you'll press the left joystick. If you push this to 30%, it's the equivalent of putting the right, the left joystick 30% up or 30% down. You can also put it 100% up or 100% down. Realize that the uh, settings will intelligently prevent it from flying off into the atmosphere if you go 100% up or crashing into the ground if you push it 100% down. The pitch roll strategy has two options. One being vector, which allows you to control the overall direction. That's what course is, that's the compass direction that the aircraft will be moving in. So whether it's due north, due south, or anywhere in between, that sets the actual aircraft direction. The other side is the speed that it's moving in. So uh, either 100% or down to zero, you can actually set, set, set the uh, miles per hour how fast it will go. Note that when you are engaged and you're flying in joystick mode, you can press the hold vector button or the hold percent button, which will actually set that vector or set that speed based upon your, the way you're currently flying the aircraft. Under the yaw strategy, we're familiar with joystick, we're familiar with focus. If we set it to heading, that's the actual compass direction that the aircraft will be pointed in. The percent is, again, the equivalent of how hard I'll be pressing the left joystick, either to the left or the right. Let's show a few examples of using these options. First one, let's set the altitude to 111 feet and let's set the yaw strategy to 22%. What this will do is it will fly to 111 feet and then start rotating around as if I pressed my left joystick to the right at 21% or 20% forward. It will rotate around. It will also allow me to continue to control my gimbal if I want so I can push the gimbal up or down to look up or down. By turning continuous photo on, I could also create a panoramic photo by taking pictures every couple seconds. Here's a second example. I'm going to use the percentage for the vertical strategy this time, so it's 9% up. So this is the equivalent of pushing my left joystick about 10% forward. I'm going to, uh, I know that the uh, direction down the field is 277 degrees, so I'm going to point it down the field so it goes dead straight that way. And I'll set the speed to 4 miles an hour. Uh, I've also got the focus strategy set to point of interest and it's already set to home plate. So what this will do, it will go straight down this field at four miles an hour, um, slowly inclining like I'm pressing it 10% at a time, all while maintaining focus on home plate. One more example here, I'm going to try to create a corkscrew effect by having it rotate in one direction and yaw in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna set it to go 6% up, maybe 1% forward, 10% to the right, and uh, I'll have it yaw 37% to the left. You really need to play with the settings and the wind conditions to figure out what works best to create the right corkscrew. One possible way to use this mode in this corkscrew effect would be to attach glow sticks to your quadcopter and then record a long exposure still photo. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to click like and go back and watch the other videos in the Autoflight Logic video series.